Welcome to SWC, SWC TV. TV. My name is Sasha. And I'm Ireland. Today we have an entire scoop full of stories, both being national, international, and local. Some stories we have being in finance, entertainment, sports, and many more. So for today, my story starts out with two stories in Hillcrest, both being the local farmer's market and one in Little Italy. I also have a story on J.P. Morgan Chase buying all of First Republic's assets. <music> in San Diego to stories located in San Francisco. Today, J.P. Morgan Chase has now purchased First Republic Bank after requiring a near loss and decrease in deposits. J.P. Morgan acquired First Republic for $10.6 billion. First Republic Bank has a high level of uninsured deposits. Meanwhile, First Republic's loan books and investments are decreasing in value and capital. Although First Republic has been taken over by J.P. Morgan Chase, the FDIC will continue to insure First Republic deposits. First Republic began sinking in March following the fall of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. According to CBS News and Stocks, stocks went from $120 to a share of $3. First Republic Bank is now the second largest bank failure ever. Any consumers who have a bank account under First Republic have nothing to worry about. Chase will handle all deposits and or withdrawals. So what does that mean for the economy? Banks will begin to restrict how much they lend out by adding more interest and or rejecting loans and or taking out new lines of credit. Welcome back in San Diego. The stories located up north in both Hillcrest and Little Italy hosted their weekly farmer's markets, including vendors with fresh produce, flowers, and organic vines, herbs, and crystals. The Little Italy farmer's market is on Wednesdays and Saturdays, providing local baked goods, pastries, and even seafood. The farmer's market is open Wednesdays from 9.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. They also have sustainable clothing, jewelry, and perfume. Some vendors being Ivy and Ivy, Dirt Don't Hurt, and The Loose Leaf, and many more. The venue also included lovely live performers, music, fresh coffee, tea, and many more. The Hillcrest Market is filled with over 175 vendors on Sundays off Normal Street from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. in San Diego. Hillcrest Farmer's Market is one of the biggest farmer's markets in San Diego. Over 10,000 people a week visit. It's in between University Avenue and Lincoln Avenue. The market first opened April 13, 1997 and has grown into a large community. Hope to see you there. That was a great story, Sasha. And now for our national story, we have Florida Governor Ron DeSantis passing immigration laws. Over 1 million immigrants relocate to the United States every year, leaving their old lives behind to start a new one. Roughly 14% of the U.S. population today are immigrants, around 45 million from all over the world living here. The process of becoming a U.S. citizen takes around 18 to 24 months, a lengthy process learning about the laws and history of the country, and completing an interview to determine eligibility to earn their citizenship. However, a constant topic of debate amongst the country regarding the situation of illegal immigrants is a pressing matter. It is estimated that almost 12 million illegal immigrants reside in the United States, crossing borders without government authorization to find asylum. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis recently signed Senate Bill 1718, an attempt to do said damage control of the federal government's lack of border policy enforcement. It is causing huge, huge problems. And it's going to get a lot worse this week with the expiration of Title 42. All right. Here we go, guys. This bill would require businesses and companies to enforce workers' eligibility regarding their citizenship status, suspend employers who don't uphold these protocols, and heighten the consequences for human smuggling. Many Florida residents and leaders are angered by this, claiming the economy of Florida will tank and crime will increase when this law undergoes practice in July 2023. Many illegal immigrants are facing fear of relocation or even worse repercussions, like being removed from the United States entirely. Here, I have the perspective and opinion of an immigrant herself who wishes to remain anonymous. My thoughts on the new immigration law that passed in Florida. As an immigrant to the United States, I have mixed feelings, but I think the problem isn't necessarily with immigration the focus isn't on these families that are working here illegally. I think the focus should be somewhere else. These people that are working illegally here in the United States, they're hardworking families. They're just trying to support their families. 
of contributing to the United States. The focus should be on the people, the criminals that are here. But I think that the people that are working here illegally are not the problem. With this bill also requiring hospitals that use Medicaid to submit reports of patient citizenship status, access to health care and general personal safety has become an issue. The future and reality for undocumented immigrants will shift with Senate Bill 1718 on its effect date of July 1st, 2023. And now on to our anchor, Miguel Mendez. He has some stories on sports and entertainment. Hello, everyone. I'm Miguel Mendez, your sports and entertainment news anchor. Today, we've got our stories on the Eastern and Western Conference Finals for the NBA, as well as the San Diego Padres and the MLB. After that, we're going to go ahead with our stories on Super Mario Brothers and Evil Dead Rise. The NBA Conference Finals have finally started, with the East Coast and the West Coast finally finishing their games to continue the series to the championship. The Los Angeles Lakers and LeBron James are going to take on Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets for the Western Conference Finals, and the Miami Heat with Jimmy Butler are going up against Jason Tatum and the Boston Celtics. It looks as though that it's going to be a rematch of the COVID bubble Western Conference and Eastern Conference Finals. Will the Denver Nuggets make it to the NBA Finals for the first time in franchise history, or will they lose to the Lakers, and will we get a rematch between the Miami Heat and the Los Angeles Lakers? for a grudge match at the championship. The Boston Celtics are also trying to make sure that they repeat history and make it back to the NBA Finals two years in a row. The Los Angeles Lakers and the Miami Heat are both play-in teams that have made it to the conference finals, something that most people could not see happening. It looks like it's gonna be an exciting championship series regardless of who makes it. Padre slump. It looks as though San Diego is currently in a losing streak as they have lost their last game against the Dodgers 4-0. It appears that this is the fifth loss in a row that the San Diego Padres have been facing this season. The San Diego Padres have only won two out of their last 10 games, those wins being 7-1 against the Cincinnati Reds and 3-8 in a game earlier in that series. Majority of the losses are coming from a rival team local to California as the Los Angeles Dodgers won their last series against the Padres last weekend and have won the first game of this series on Friday, May 12th. With Tatis Jr. back in the lineup, many people speculate they could possibly repeat what they did last year or maybe even make it to the MLB Finals. Hopefully, the San Diego Padres can bounce back and continue that momentum later into the season. This is Miguel Mendez, SWC TV Journalism. Have you been to the movies lately? Miguel has some more information on new movie reviews. The new Super Mario Brothers movie is a smash hit and has finally surpassed $1 billion at the box office. It is an amazing, family-friendly adventure that all ages can enjoy. It sticks to its roots, adds some razzle-dazzle, and gives you a fun experience at the theater. And it may very well knock off Avatar 2 for film of the year. We give this movie 10 stars out of 10. Evil Dead 2 is a fantastically spooky movie that you're going to need a teddy bear to watch at the theater. It sticks to its roots as well, and it also pays homage to the original Evil Dead films. Not only was this star-studded cast amazing, but there was intense and graphic horror scenes that many horror fans may have felt left out in prior movies. You should bring a paper bag to the theater if you feel like you're squeamish, because this movie might just make you puke. We're going to give it a 10 out of 10 on the scare factor. And now onto our other anchor, Luis. He has two stories for us, one being one at the San Diego TJ border and another at a local grocery store. This is Luis, your Uncle Phil reporter. Today we have one of our top stories on the Tijuana and San Diego border. How people they cross at 3 in the morning to get to their jobs in their school. And this is our story. Many dual citizens in San Diego wake up before the crack of dawn every morning to make sure that they can make to work. This includes traveling by walking as well as waiting in line by car to cross, both of which take several hours to get across the border. This line, I wait approximately two hours to get across. Now, that's the US side. We're on the Mexican side, and yes. As we can notice, 
the person, the vendor that is selling all these sorts of tortas. What time do you wake it up usually in the morning to do your tortas? One o'clock. A local business at the border has their own business selling tortas. Tortas or Mexican style sandwiches that are much bigger than your average American sandwich and rounder. Many people purchase food while waiting in line and crossing as they don't have time to cook at home. This is just a sneak peek into the daily life of what is to be a dual citizen in the area of San Diego. Have you ever felt that you want cookies from Peru or a coffee from Puerto Rico? Today in our story, we find a place that you can get it. This is our story. This story takes place at Andres Martin Market. I visited the store and interviewed the shop owner about what makes this market so special. This convenience store has been around for decades in San Diego and has his home to many cultures and foods. You can get Venezuelan soda, Puerto Rican food, Cuban food, whatever Latin food one's heart desires. I spoke to the owner of the store and she shares stories of how many marriage proposals have taken place at the shop, which seems to make it sounds like a pot for love. Here are some frozen tequeños and salteñas available for purchase. If you're in the mood for good food, Andres Latin Market should be your next stop. So next time I'm driving by, I'll pick it up some Venezuelan panarina. Luis Lopez, SWC TV. My name is Sasha. And my name is Ireland. And this is SWC TV.